Welcome to Manoa Community Church. My name is Stefan Bomberger and I'm the pastor here at Manoa in Havertown, Pennsylvania. If it's your first time worshiping with us online, please follow us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can worship with us every Sunday at 10 a.m. We're continuing in our preaching series through the book of Acts this morning with a special message called Experiencing Spiritual Refreshment out of Acts chapter 3. It's the second sermon that Peter preaches in the book of Acts and in it God promises us refreshment, times of refreshment that come from the Lord. So if you're longing to be refreshed by the Lord, today is a great service to stay through and hear God speak to you through his word. So let's press into the Lord. We're going to sing a few songs of praise at the front end of our service, uh, but let's join our hearts in prayer together in our homes as we invite the presence of God to fill us right now. Let's pray. Well, Father God, we thank you that you are God that's not only high and exalted, but you are a God that comes to us and are near, that you are a heavenly Father. And Lord, that you came into this world through Christ and humbled yourself to be near to us and to make us your sons and daughters, Lord. And you come near to us even now by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, the promise of your word is as we draw near to you, Lord, you will draw near to us. Lord, we confess and acknowledge that we are dry and weary and you are the source of living water. And so, God, we pray that even today as we hear your word preached, as we sing these songs of praise, that we would encounter times of refreshment, times of refreshing that come from your presence, Lord. So meet with us today, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Fail not as the 
Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Then on the
Praise the Lord. What an awesome worship song. My soul magnifies the Lord. Well, let's enter into corporate prayer. Won't you bow your head and pray with me? Father, we come even right now. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that you are a God who loves us so much that in spite of us, God, you continue to love on us. We thank you, God, that you're a God of grace and a God of mercy, a God of long suffering and patience and gentleness and kindness. Thank you, Father, that you've not dealt with us according to our iniquities, nor rewarded us after our sins. God, we thank you even right now, and we ask even right now in the name of Jesus that you will forgive us of our sins. We thank you, O oh God, because you said in your word that if we confess our sins, you are just and faithful to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we thank you, O oh God, that you got the power to wash us and purge us and cleanse us. So God, we accept your forgiveness even right now. And God, we thank you that you're the God of all flesh and there's nothing too hard for you. We thank you that you are El Elyon, the most high God, El Shaddai, the most powerful God. You are Jehovah Roe. God, you see everything. You're Jehovah Nisi. You fight our battles. Lord, God, you are everything that we need you to be. In fact, God, you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we thank you that we got a great God who we serve. There's nothing too hard for you. And God, we ask even right now that your perfect will be done in our lives. God, you know the needs of all of us that are looking on the airways. God, all of us that are on watching the screen even right now. God, you know what we stand in need of and we ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch us, oh God, that you'll move by your spirit, that you'll provide, God, that you'll make a way out of no way, God, that you would heal, that you would deliver, that you would set free, God. Thank you even right now. God, we bless your name. We magnify you and we exalt you. We ask, God, that you use Pastor Stephan to preach your word with power and authority. We pray, God, that souls will get saved, Lord. Saints will be edified, and most of all, you'll be glorified. And God, set our hearts on mission, like the first church did, Lord, that was full of fire and, and with burning zeal to save those who are lost. God, turn our hearts God, that we might be full of fire and zeal and want to save souls throughout this county, not only this county, but also in the cities, Lord, that we might be your light, that we might be your salt, that we might be your word, God, that we might be your hand, that we might be your eyes, that we might be your feet. God, use us to your glory, to your honor, and to your praises. And we thank you for that in advance. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, before we have our corporate reading of scripture, Pastor Stephan needs to make a few announcements. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ron, thank you so much for praying for us, brother. As we turn our attention to announcements, I have five quick announcements for us. The first, as always, today at 1130, our youth and our children's ministry are meeting. Today, again, Colin is going to invite our youth, that's grade 6 up through grades 12, to our Zoom meeting at 1130. Go ahead, Colin. Hi Manoa, it's your friendly neighborhood intern Colin. I just wanted to give another quick reminder that we are still having youth group on Zoom at 11.30. An email with the link will be sent out sometime early Sunday morning or the night before. If you've not been receiving this email or have any questions, please contact my guy, Joe Gormley. His email is joe at manoa.org. The past two weeks we've been talking about salvation, what it looks like, and why we need it. And I'm so excited as we continue the lesson this week and we talk about how we are saved and the three specific steps everyone needs to take to achieve salvation. Confession of your sins, repentance for your sins, and belief in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Thank you and God bless. Great. So youth, we'll see you today at 1130 on the Zoom call. If you don't have the link, please email joe at manoa.org and you can get that. And of course, our children up through the fifth grade are also meeting on their separate Zoom meeting, uh, doing crafts and songs together. It's a wonderful time. If you need that secure link, just email us at kingdomkids at manoa.org. Secondly, just a reminder that tomorrow our new Bible reading plan starts through the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. We're going to read one chapter a day starting tomorrow, Monday, May 25th. 
And so you should be getting a text. If you get our text tonight at 5 p.m. with that link, please click that link and that'll join you to the same Bible reading plan as the rest of us so that starting tomorrow we can read one chapter a day and talk it over together through the YouVersion app. So join us for that Bible reading plan starting tomorrow. Thirdly, we are looking to hire a full-time worship director, as many of you know. So please continue to pray for us in our search. Please go to manoa.org forward slash worship director if you want to read about the job description. And also, if you could copy and paste that URL to share in your social media feeds, in your pages, Facebook, all of that, please help us spread the word so that we can do as broad a search as possible. And please pray with us that God will bring the perfect person to build up our music ministry at Manoa Community Church. Fourthly, the Manoa memo this week had our first Send Snapshot. Send Snapshot is our missionary updates, and we have a great interview with Brown and Giselle Caldwell sharing about what they're doing in the Philippines to plant churches among unreached people groups. If you didn't watch that or didn't realize that's what it was, please go back to our YouTube channel to watch that or go back to your Manoa Memo email that you got last Wednesday and click on the link to watch that video. It's about 25 minutes, but it's mostly them sharing their heart and hearing how we're reaching the nations for Christ. And if you didn't know this, every dollar you give to Manoa Community Church, 25% of that goes to reach Uh, unreached people groups, and also plant and revitalize churches here in greater Philadelphia. So thank you for your generosity as you watch that. Realize that that is you partnering to reach the nations for Jesus Christ. And our fifth and final announcement is to please remember to pray every day at 719. That's the hashtag 1919 prayers. We pray for the eradication of COVID-19. We're starting to see more of the state of Pennsylvania go yellow, and we're believing God that starting in June, this region is going to start to go yellow as well. And so in light of that, also pray for us in this way. Starting in June 7th, the first Sunday in June, we are switching from a pre-record service to a live stream which means all of our volunteers are coming back on the worship band, on the AVL ministry. We're not yet opening up our sanctuary to the entire church as we watch what's going to happen with our region and the other churches. We want to be responsible and patient, wait for the governor to give us permission to do so, but we will have our volunteers and do a live stream. So please join us, continue to join us online for worship starting in June 7th for the live stream. It'll still be on YouTube. It'll still be on Facebook but also pray for all the various volunteers that are now going to be joining us at our campus to start bringing this back. This is phase one of our reopen as we get our volunteers back and re-engaged. Starting June 7th, we will still continue our Zoom meetings for children's ministry and youth meetings. So all of that will remain virtual, but our worship service will be happening here live. So thank you for praying for us and thank you for praying every day at 719 p.m. for the eradication of COVID-19. So that's it for announcements. If you will now, please open in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter three, Proverbs chapter three, as we have our public reading of scripture. Colin's going to do that for us. Go ahead, Colin. Today's reading comes from Proverbs three, one through eight. Verse one begins, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for lengths of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you, Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Colin. If you would now, please open in your Bibles to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. As I shared at the outset of today's service, we have a sermon today entitled Experiencing Spiritual Refreshment. Because you'll remember last week that we saw one of the first explicit miracles in the book of Acts, where a lame beggar is healed in the powerful name of Jesus. And just like the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit is poured out, a large crowd gathers around, and Peter preaches his first sermon in the book of Acts. Well, now a large crowd is gathered around as well. And Peter has an opportunity to preach his second sermon. And in this sermon, he promises us and he promises the people who are listening in that first hearers times of spiritual refreshment. And so we're going to look at this sermon and look at how we can experience spiritual refreshment in the Lord and in Christ. So I'm going to pray for us and we're going to unpack the rest of chapter three 
from verses 11 through verse 26, which is all of Peter's sermon. So let's pray. Well, God, I thank you for your word, and we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for this spirit-inspired sermon that has already been preached, and it's a weighty thing to preach a sermon on a sermon, Lord, and especially of one from the apostle Peter, Lord, a summary of his sermon recorded in Holy Scripture right now. But as we listen to this sermon, and as we hear his words, and we hear your word, we pray that you would speak to us with prophetic imminence, that you would come to us even now, and the promises of Scripture that are laid out for these original hearers would reverberate into our hearts, because these promises continue today. And so I ask God that you would speak to us and meet us as we hear this sermon and bring the spiritual refreshment, the times of refreshing that you promise. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you remember at the end of verse 10, this man is now leaping, praising God from the beautiful gate. Well, they make their way over to Solomon's portico, same place where Jesus, by the way, preached in John chapter 10, if you want to check that out. So they've been here before. They've heard Jesus preach here before. Peter has watched that before. Now here's his opportunity to preach to the crowds. In verse 11, it says, while he, referring to the man that was healed, clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, that's the crowd, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk? Now what he's about to do here, I'm going to jump over this section for a moment, but he redirects all attention away from himself. We talked about that last week. Peter did not heal this man. John did not heal this man. God healed this man through his servant, Jesus Christ, who he raised from the dead. He gives all glory to Christ for this miracle. In fact, he doesn't even really draw attention to the man. The man falls into the background. He's not saying, hey, look at this man. Look at these wonderful miracles. Rather, this miracle becomes a sign to point them towards Jesus Christ, away from the apostles, away from the healed person, towards the one who did the healing, Jesus Christ. And then in verse 17, after they hear about Jesus Christ, listen to this. He says, now brothers, talking about the fact that they crucified Jesus, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold, verse 18, by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Verse 19, repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out verse 20, and that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. There's that promise of spiritual refreshment. And that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. In this sermon, At the outset, I want you to follow what happens here. Again, he directs their attention away from him, away from the healed man, and he directs our attention to Jesus Christ. And he says, if you will repent and turn to Jesus, three things will happen in your life. Your sins will be blotted out. Times of refreshment will come to you in the Lord. And that there's a future day of restoration when Jesus comes back where all things will be restored for you as well. Full restoration. So do you see that? Those three things again are sins blotted out, times of refreshing, and full restoration. That is the refreshment that God promises. That is the healing that God promises to all who are listening in this early day and in our day today. Do you want that? Peter draws our attention to how we can turn to the Lord to receive this refreshing in this sermon. And there's three big pictures of Jesus Christ, this beautiful portrait he emerges where he draws his attention to Jesus Christ. He draws our attention to the Lord and he says that if you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, refreshment will come and this is who the Lord Jesus Christ is. So if you're taking notes, refreshment comes to all who turn to Jesus, God's glorified risen servant. God's glorified risen servant. 
This is at verse 13 through verse 18. Follow along. He says to them, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this, we, referring to the apostles, are witnesses. And his name, the name of Jesus, by faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of of you all. Verse 17, now brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. And there goes the promise for refreshment. And look at verse 26. God having raised up his servant, referring to Jesus, sent him first to you to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. The first promise here comes, refreshment comes to all who turn to Jesus, God's glorified risen servant. So what does Peter do here? Remember, he says, it's not our own power. It's not our own piety that did this. Jesus did this. The very same Jesus that in Jerusalem you handed over to Pilate, the very same Jesus that Pilate said was not guilty, but you had Barabbas released instead of Jesus so that the innocent was punished and the guilty was set free. And he preaches the gospel there so clearly about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that God raised his servant, he tells us multiple times, that God glorified his servant Jesus. And he uses some powerful titles about who Jesus is. Do you remember in there, he tells us that Jesus is the holy and righteous one, verse 14. That means Jesus never sinned. He has never done anything wrong. He's fully holy, set apart. He's fully righteous. He's always done the right thing and he's never done the wrong thing. That is the sinless savior that died on the cross. And Peter preaches him powerfully to this crowd and powerfully to us. And he uses this amazing oxymoron that just hits you in the gut. Did you see that which follows? He says, you killed, he says, the author of life. And at first you hear that you say, that's not even possible. How could the author of life be killed? But because God has put on flesh and become a man in Christ, he most certainly did die. And he most certainly was killed. And we learn from John's gospel and elsewhere that Jesus was in the beginning with God and is God. So that God put on flesh the holy and righteous one and then the author of life, the one who gives you breath, the one that gives them breath, the one that spoke this creation into existence, put on flesh and died for them and died for you. Wow. And you'll notice again, I use the language of servant because Peter uses the language of servant. And you say, well, what is that? referring to. Obviously, he's the servant of God. He's serving God's purposes. But that's like a hyperlink, once again, in their minds to the Old Testament. Because the prophet Isaiah spoke about the suffering servant of God in Isaiah chapter 52 and 53, the one that was rejected and despised by men and afflicted. And we esteemed and smitten by God, but he was wounded for our transgressions and By his wounds we are healed and talks about his resurrection and God prolonging his days and he will see his offspring. All of this, you can read it on your own so that as he's talking about the servant of the Lord and they're thinking about the man that they have rejected and despised, they're saying we played right into the hand of the prophecies of Isaiah itself. Jesus is the prophesied servant of God. Everything according to God's perfect plan. And before he calls them to repent, you remember that? And calls us to repent, repent to turn from our sins, to turn to Christ. He says, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. And I appreciate that. He says, I know you didn't know what you were doing. And it's important because it, explains their sin and why they did it. They didn't understand what they were doing. 
but it doesn't excuse their sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Have you ever done something wrong and you didn't realize it was wrong? That's acting out of ignorance. You maybe didn't know that using God's name in vain was blaspheming. Now you know, now you're accountable. Maybe you did that as a child, you didn't know. It explained your sin, but it doesn't excuse it. And we can think of a number of sins like that. And that's what Peter does. He says, listen, I know that you guys didn't know what you were doing, but you're still guilty. And all of us are guilty before God when we sin against him, when we sin against him knowingly and we sin against him unknowingly. And as I'm preaching the gospel, as Peter preached the gospel, and then he quickly pivots there, he says, repent, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. You might listen to this and say, well, how is this refreshing, Stefan? Because all I'm hearing about is my sin and rejecting the Savior. But don't miss this, because as we see our sins, we see the Savior, and he couples that promise in there of refreshment with this promise that your sins may be blotted out. Because under this first portrait, under this first picture of Jesus Christ, the one who brings us his refreshment, the refreshing that comes from the Lord, I think the link there by why this is refreshing is because Jesus is the one who died for your sins and Jesus is the one who will blot out your sins if you turn to him from your sins. And sin is not only guilt against God, though that is the greatest offense, but sin hurts. Sin wounds us. Sins that we do to other people and sins that are done against us. And they mar us and they define us at times. They write themselves all over our lives and they wake us up at night. And there's a promise here that God will blot out your sins blot out the remembrance of your sins. That language of blotting out is used throughout the Bible. It's often in a writing. This idea of back in the day where ink would really settle onto the paper like our ink does today. You do it and it's instantly settled. If there was a mistake made, they could literally just wipe it. They could blot it out and the ink would go off before it would dry. And that is the picture that Peter holds out for us inspired by the Holy Spirit when we turn to Jesus This refreshment comes to us because your sins, the sense of guilt that you bear in your soul can be blotted out. And the guilt that we have against God can be removed from you as far as the east is from the west. That is very refreshing. And if your soul today is feeling condemned, if your soul today is feeling crushed by the weight of your sin, turn to Jesus Christ to receive his refreshment. Turn to the glorified risen servant. Jesus is alive and he gives the forgiveness of sins. He will blot out your sins if you come to him today. So that's the first portrait we get from Peter's sermon. Times of refreshment come from the Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the glorified risen servant. Secondly, refreshment comes to all who turn to Jesus, God's prophet, like Moses, God's prophet like Moses. This is the second portrait of the Savior that he gives to us out of verses 22 through 24. So after he talks about this refreshment, the blotting out of sins and the restoration, verse 21, verse 22, listen to this. He says, Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also proclaimed these days. So not only does he paint a picture of the Savior as the glorified risen servant prophesied by Isaiah, but now he goes back even further and talks about Moses. Now you have to remember that this first audience is completely Jewish and they pride themselves on being followers of Moses. Even when Jesus was going back and forth with the religious authorities of his day, we say, we follow Moses. We don't know where this guy comes from. And Peter is very quick to show that Jesus comes from the line of Moses. He's from the 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has raised up his servant, that there is a continuity with this message and ministry that goes back all the way to the beginning of the covenants that God made with the fathers. And Moses was one of the greatest prophets ever. I mean, the people of God were already multiplying in the land of Egypt, but God raised up Moses, who was a deliverer that led them out of Egypt. You remember that? And through the wilderness, God gave Moses the law, the Ten Commandments. And God used Moses, the prophet of God, to constitute the people of Israel into this church, into this nation that then entered into the promised land, ultimately under Joshua. And he prophesied himself, the prophet of God, Moses, prophesied that there would be another prophet and prophets to come after him from within the church, from within the brethren, from within the family of God, and that they had to listen to him and listen to them. And certainly God raised up many prophets. We have them in our Bible, right? These various prophecies, I already talked about Isaiah. And prophets were like spiritual covenant watchdogs, Right? Sometimes we think that prophets are primarily about speaking God's word. And certainly they did that. They received revelation and spoke it. But also what we see with the prophets is they don't care who you are. They don't care if you're the king of Israel. If you are out of line with the word of God, if you're falling out of line with the covenant that God has given through Moses and to the church, they will come after you and they will speak the truth to you. Whether you are weak or strong, powerful or not, rich or poor, God raised up these prophets to speak the truth. And the people of God were called to listen to them. But there was not just prophets, but a prophet, the prophet. Peter says, this prophet, that God would one day send this new Moses, just like Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the law of God. Jesus on the mount gave his masterful sermon where he said that you have heard it said, but I say to you, giving the law of God to us, the new covenant to us. One has come, the prophet of God has come. And not only is he the servant of God, according to Isaiah, but he's also the prophet of God that Moses predicted would come and everybody must listen to him or they will be destroyed, he said. Now, you hear that and you think, well, I thought Jesus was the son of God, not just a prophet. And here's the point you need to hear. Jesus is not just a prophet. He's far more than a prophet, but he's certainly not less than a prophet. Jesus certainly was a prophet of God and the son of God and the savior of the world and, and, and he fulfills the whole Bible and he fulfills this prediction and Peter draws their attention and says, if you want to follow Moses, then you follow Jesus. If you want to be saved, then you follow the suffering servant. And he gets very clear with them and with us. He says, you shall listen to him in whatever he tells you, quoting Moses verse 22. Now again, he's coming right off of the heels of promising refreshment. Your sins are blotted out. Times are refreshing from the Lord. Restoration, he says, just like Moses, he says, God will raise up this one. Jesus is this one. And you got to listen to him or you'll be destroyed. And once again, you hear that, you think, well, that doesn't sound very refreshing. That sounds a little scary. But it is true. And that's the point you have to hear from this. I think about Moses again in the Old Testament. Do you remember when the people of God left Egypt? And God was speaking through Moses, but the people wouldn't always listen to Moses. They would start to grumble against Moses. Moses, the one where through God provided manna from heaven, he fed them, struck the rock, and they received water from him. They received the very oracles of God from Moses. And yet they wouldn't always listen to him. And when that would happen, things would go poorly in their lives. They would start to grumble and say, I wish we were back in Egypt representing the world. God finally got so tired of their grumbling and disobedience. He said, you're going to be wandering in the wilderness for 40 years until this whole generation dies off and your children will get to inherit the promised land. And there they are, lost and wandering, year after year, decade after decade, in this dry desert of a land. Why? 
because they didn't listen to the prophet of God. And as you think about, and as I pondered this, these times of refreshing from God, we think about authority, we think, God, I want to have authority. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman, right? How's that working out for you? Because the promise of Scripture is that the Lord is your shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. He is our leader. We are to listen to him. And where does he lead us? He leads us beside still waters. He restores our souls. And if you want a straight and refreshing shot into the promised land, you will listen to him. But if you want to have a dry and weary land where you're lost and wandering, you'll disregard the prophet like Moses. You'll disregard Jesus. If you want the refreshment that is promised by God, listen to Jesus Christ. Obey Jesus Christ. He is the one prophesied about by the prophet Moses. He is the one to come. We are called to listen to him. And when you listen to him, he will refresh your soul. And he will lead you into pleasant pastures and guard and protect you as your good shepherd. So that's the second point. Refreshment comes to all who turn to Jesus, God's prophet like Moses. His third picture of the Savior comes out of verse 25. So not only is he the glorified risen servant, the prophet like Moses, he says refreshment comes to all who turn to Jesus, God's blessing from Abraham. God's blessing from Abraham. Verse 25, you are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your father saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And if you go back to verse 13, it says to this again, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant, Jesus. He's saying that Jesus is the promised one, the promised child, the promised offspring of Abraham to bless all the nations. If you don't know your biblical chronology, Abraham comes even before Moses. After we fell into sin in Genesis 3 and a curse went on creation, in Genesis 12, the very first book of the Bible, God calls Abram out from the nations and says, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing to all the nations. He shows them the stars in the sky and says, so shall your offspring be, Abram. And he has no children at that time. Ultimately, Isaac is the child of the promise. And then Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob's name, he wrestles with God. His name is turned into Israel, has the 12 sons who go into Egypt, become the 12 tribes of Israel. And Moses picks them up there. And that's where that story continues. So there is one promise to Abraham thousands of years ago where God called him out of the world and said, I am going to bless you. And through your seed, through your offspring, through your child, I will bless all the families of the earth. There is one coming out of Israel, one coming from the children of Abraham that will rise up and not only bless the children of Abraham, but every nation, every tribe, and every tongue will be blessed by this one child. And once again, Peter grabs that and says, Jesus is the fulfillment of your whole Bible. He is the child and promised one of Abraham. He is the prophet like Moses. He is the savior prophesied in the book of Isaiah. He is all of it. Jesus is everything. And I'm standing here today as a preacher who is not ethnically from the nation of Israel or the Abrahamic people, but I am a child of God and I am a child spiritually, my Bible teaches, of Israel. Why? Because the seed of Israel, the seed of Abraham, now lives inside of me through Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham. And all the nations, as that blessing ripples out from his people now, through Jesus Christ, are invited into be blessed and then to be a blessing and spread that to all the world. I shared a little earlier that before Genesis 12, where God called Abram, there was that Genesis 3, oops, right, where we sinned and a curse was brought onto all of creation. 
Really, all of the evil in the world, the sin that came because of our rebellion, the death that entered into the world, the whole world itself, the earthquakes, the famines, the COVID-19, it all became, according to your Bible, because of our sin in that Genesis 3 curse. But listen to this, because this is built into Peter's sermon. Do you remember his third promise? Remember the blotting out of sins, times of refreshing, and the restoration of all things, right? Why? How could God restore all things? Because through the blessing of Abraham given through Christ, the curse is being reversed. The curse is being lifted from creation and Far as the curse is found, he makes God's blessings found and it spreads out so that Jesus will undo all the curses when he comes back. And just like we saw a few weeks ago, that picture in the new heavens and the new earth, we are restored to paradise. We are restored to the garden. We are restored to the tree of life. Why? Because the child of Abraham has come and you can become sons and daughters of God. You can have access to the free water of life. You can experience his refreshing. You can experience his restoration. You can have all of your sins wiped away. And we know that Jesus is alive, not only because the apostles saw it, but because he lives inside of all those who trust in him. And just as Peter is preaching this message, this man, evidence A, that God is restoring all things. He was lame. He is walking and leaping for joy. Jesus Christ has done it. The glorified risen servant, the prophet like Moses, and the blessing from Abraham. Let's pray. If you're listening to this sermon and you have not repented, you have not turned to Jesus Christ, God would speak to you right now and says, repent, turn to me, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. That times of refreshing may come to you from me. That he would blot out your sins for the very first time and they would be blotted out forever. And that you would know on that final day of restoration that you will be restored rather than cast out from his presence. And the way you do that is by turning to Jesus Christ. Peter is clear, God is clear. Repent and turn to Jesus the risen glorified servant, the author of life who died for you, the holy and righteous one. And if you trust in him, if you listen to him like the prophet Moses, you will receive the blessing of God today and it will follow you into eternity. Pray something like this. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Forgive me for my sins, even the ones that I did in ignorance. And forgive the sins that I did knowingly, Lord. I confess them to you now. Come and live inside of me and raise me like this lame man so that I would leap spiritually for joy now and forever. God, thank you. Thank you for the refreshment you promised. Pour out your spirit into my heart and refresh my soul even now, I pray. And for the entire church, Lord, I now turn my prayers and I say, God, refresh us. Because this refreshment is not a one-time thing. It said that there's times of refreshment, times of refreshing that come to us. And Lord, we're looking for that time right now. Lord, we're asking for a fresh refreshment and refreshing right now. We thank you for the glory of our Savior, Jesus. We thank you that he fulfills all of your promises and everything in the whole Bible. Help us to look to Jesus Christ right now and find our refreshment in him. These times are refreshing from you, O Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, let's join our voices in one final song of praise. Sing this. Now the darkness fades into new beginnings. Our eyes to a home beyond. Our creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved when the earth gives away. For the reason one is overcome. Yes, he has. And for every 
lift your voice. He shall reign forever, strongholds now surrender for. Church, this is the portion in the service where we have an opportunity to give our offering to the Lord. There are a couple ways to give. One option is to use the QR code that will appear both now and after the benediction. To use it, simply open the camera app on your phone and scan the code. It will send you to a gift page where you can easily give today or set up recurring giving. Also, for those who prefer to give by check, you can always mail in your offering to the church or drop off gifts in the secure offering box outside in the breezeway. Thank you. Let's pray over our offering. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to give. We thank you, O oh God, that you trust us, God, to worship you with our giving. We thank you for the monies that you give us. Thank you for allowing us to be stewards over what you give us. And God, we give back to you freely. We give back to you joyfully because you love a cheerful giver. God, we give to you because it's the least we can do, God. All that you bless us with, God, we want to just give back to you and say thank you. Now, God, use our offering for your glory, for your honor, and for your praises. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Stephan, for once again uh, preaching from the depths of your soul. We thank you for your studying of the word. And we've been blessed by the word of God. I know I'm not the only one that can say praise the Lord. Uh, that the word was fresh, that it was alive, and it was living, and it was quick, and we were blessed by it today. In fact, we can say just like those two men that was walking down the road of Emmaus, my, didn't our hearts burn as the man of God spoke to us along the way. Amen? Well, we've had a great time in the Lord. Why don't we end with our benediction? Amen? Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, henceforth and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>